in Genesis chapter if you have your Bible let's go together with me to Genesis chapter 16 verse 7 and 8 says the following now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness by the spring on the way to shore and he said Hagar Sarah's maid where are you coming from or where have you come from and where are you going she said I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai angels on assignment in the Bible in the Old Testament specifically it deals a lot and in the New Testament with the topic of angels in our church we have have heard a lot and we have coming prayer line on this Sunday where a lot of things are dealt with when it comes to demonic but the scripture says that there is twice as many angels as there are demons scripture tells us that angels are numerous and there is more reference to angels in the Bible than to the Holy Spirit than to demons Satan or even combined and we see a lot of mentions even in the scripture that we just read where the Bible says the angel of the Lord and a lot of theologians they debate about the fact that uh, in the Old Testament when the reference was made to the angel of the Lord it, that it was actually Lord Jesus Christ appearing before time which, which why he explained to Pharisees when they debated with him and he says that before Abraham was I was and he made a reference that I've been I've seen Abraham and they said you're crazy you're 30 years of age how did you see Abraham and he says that I am that I am because Abraham met the Lord and the Bible said that the angel of the Lord and we see many references in the Bible with the angel of the Lord and many people believe that that makes a reference to Jesus Christ but there are references where it makes to an angel of the Lord not the angel but an angel of the Lord nevertheless the topic of angels is all over the Bible it's all also all over the Hollywood everyone in here believes and people in America many people believe that we all have our own personal guardian angels if you're a child you have your angel and most of us feel like the the only assignment the angel has is sitting on your trunk and watching how you drive and make sure you don't get into any accidents but as we're going to discover this evening that angels have a very huge assignment that is not limited to protecting you on the road I want you to know one thing about angels today is they are angel of God they are not your angel they are accountable to God God is their boss not you you don't tell them what to do God does they don't work for me they don't work for you even the Lord Jesus Christ when he faced his disciples and they you know wanted to uh, pull the, the sword and defend Jesus and Jesus says I can call the Father to send the legions he didn't say I can call the legions that tells us that the angels that we don't command the angels because God commands them we are in line with God and God releases those angels and we can ask God to release those angels when they are in consistence with God's will somebody say amen. amen and we also see about angels is that many times people have this view of angels is that that they have always wings even the person who designed this has this view that angels have wings the problem with that theory is that in the Bible when Lot met angels they looked like strangers they did not have wings they actually looked normal people looking for a place to rest and Lot took him into the house not suspecting they were angels and the scripture says that the men of the city they came and they wanted to know these men these angels carnally means sexually that tells us that these guys were not glowing beings with wings and these people were like normal people angels don't have a body but temporarily they can take on a body to fulfill a particular mission that's why the Bible says be careful how you treat strangers because some the way they treated strangers they didn't know that actually they entertain angels that doesn't mean that you have to pick up every hitchhiker hoping it was an angel because <laughs> you might meet an angel and just you might not be happy with what kind of angel that hitchhiker is even when Mary the Bible says that Gabriel came to Mary Mary was surprised not by his wings 
not by his glowing face but by his greeting Mary wasn't shocked with anything how he looked that tells us the most likely many angelic occurrences in the Bible a person came not a glowing being with wings that right away changes things you don't know who's sitting next to you they've been telling you they're an angel <laughs> joking aside angels are on assignment and while our goal is not to always seek and pray to see angels but we have to ask the Lord to also help us live in the awareness we are always surrounded by them many miracles that happen in people's lives are work of angels our work of angels and today I just want to take just a small scoop of things we don't want to talk about things that are there we want to talk about things that are here on earth today the story that we've read is a story of Hagar Hagar was a slave originally she's from Egypt she was a slave most likely Abraham bought her when he he was there uh, many times though in those days uh, people were offered themselves for sale so that they could have a place to live and a place to work and kind of like when you go and you work for your boss you submit a resume that's how people did with slavery it wasn't like what we think of today it was just people were looking for employment employment and, and place to live and so Hagar she eventually gets pregnant and Hagar gets a little bit cocky before she grows a stomach she already her head got swollen and Sarah just like every normal person doesn't put up with a arrogant snotty spoiled brat kind of attitude and Sarah tries to put her back in her place but see if you are swollen it's kind of hard to squeeze back into the place when you used to be humble see for some people it takes very little to get proud as long as they have nothing they're humble until they get pregnant until they get a job until small little breakthrough until small little answer to prayer and something happens it's not their faith that explodes it's their head that explodes and when your head gets exploded something happens in the proper good place you don't ever fit in because good places always puke out proud people heaven did with Lucifer and Sarah did with Hagar and the interesting part is when Hagar left Sarah's house he, she didn't leave uh, saying I am proud she left saying Hagar doesn't love me proud people always have really beautiful excuses they're easily offended their ego is as big as God's heart and it's always someone doesn't love me somebody didn't greet me somebody didn't give me this every single time but if you dig deeper if you get honest with God get honest before God you will see that yes it's true that maybe Sarah was not all right but when angel meets Hagar he did not accuse Sarah he told Hagar go back because if you want to be pregnant and proud something's gonna have to die and I don't want it to be your pregnancy I want it to be your pride because yes Hagar you conceived but you also became conceited and these two things cannot live if you want your destiny that you're caring to live listen that swollen head it has to shrink amen it's like that lady who comes to pastor after he preached preached a sermon on pride and he says pastor i have a big sin to confess pastor says what is your sin she says that i my sin is pride he says how do you think or why do you know you have pride she says every morning i wake up i look in the mirror and i said look at you you beautiful thing you're the most beautiful thing in the world she says, Pastor, I feel so bad about that sin. Pastor says, dear, it's not a sin you have. You just have a mistake. An imagination. But it's not a sin. The angel meets Hagar. And Hagar is running. She's running from where she got pregnant. She's running pregnant. And she's actually in a good place she is around water and guess where Hagar is running because the angels ask her two questions where are you coming from and he's asking a second question where are you going have you noticed that Hagar only answered one question she says I'm coming from Sarah but she never answered where she was going because the city she located herself in was one city closer to being back in Egypt where Hagar came from 
See every time we get pregnant and proud and we find excuses that people are hypocrites, people don't love me, somebody didn't do this and do that and we don't deal with those things but we allow that that thing to drive us away from the place that God planted us in. Whether you like it or not you always will gravitate toward your past not your future. And many times we are pregnant with the destiny but because Satan stumbles us, he trips us with pride, trips us with our ego, you know, centric, you know, those feelings. We trip over that and then we go back to our past and we lose our future in the process. I want you to write down three simple assignments that the angels will have in our life. Number one. Angels assist those who don't resist their advice. Angel meets Hagar for the first time and the angel does not tell Hagar, doesn't do a miracle for Hagar, he gives her an advice. He said, Hagar I know you're offended. I know you don't want to go back and I know you think Sarah has wronged you. I know that Sarah is a hypocrite. You think that Sarah doesn't have any love of God in her life. I know you have that and you have the right to think of that. But you need to go back. If you don't respect Sarah, have respect for your destiny. But you need to go back. And you know what Hagar did? Hagar instead of debating with an angel and saying no not in my watch not in this time unless Sarah calls me first and apologizes unless I receive a sincere apology. I will never go. Who does she think she is that she's gonna treat me like that? Am I her property? No, I'm pregnant. She's not pregnant. She's just jealous of me and until she admits she's jealous I'm not doing anything and Hagar instead of taking that route that most people would take Hagar says yes sir. It's interesting. The second time Hagar meets an angel she is in drought with Ishmael and dying but the second time an angel comes he doesn't give advices. He gives her a miracle. He helps her find water where she didn't see water. Angels do not assist with miracles if their advices are rejected. Miracles are a result of our obedience to God's advice, counsel and many times that advice that counsel comes contrary to our feelings, our circumstances and what we have planned to do. We already have chosen our navigation to go toward that path and the angel of God comes and says listen I know you don't want to go that route but you got to turn around, you got to submit, you got to change your ways and you say God but I already like it, this is good. If you obey God on the way from a painful situation to go back to where God wants you to be you have bonus, you have faith that whatever bump you hit on the road you can plead and you will begin to see a supernatural intervention of God's angels in your life. God's angels don't assist people who have a need. They assist people who have shown their obedience to God by following His word, His direction, even when their feelings were contrary. Number two, the task of angels is that they protect by directing. They protect by directing. Protection through direction. One of the ways that the angel of the Lord protected Hagar is by giving her the right directions, not by necessarily giving her a miracle. We see exactly the same thing how Jesus was protected is when the angel came to Joseph and gave Joseph directions. He didn't took Jesus supernaturally from the place where Jesus was and relocated him to Egypt. The angel came and gave him direction and Joseph got up during the night. He didn't wait for three days to get confirmations. He didn't consult everybody. He didn't just simply say maybe I ate too much pizza. Joseph got up quickly and he got protected because he followed directions. Wise men were about to send sensitive information to the wrong people and the angel of God came at night and protected them from getting into the shady business with Herod by giving them direction. 
we see that everywhere in the Bible the way God protects with his angels is by giving you direction not by just shielding you you can't go to a club expecting God's protection if you're struggling with drinking you can't go to pornographic sites expect not to fall into pornography expecting God's protection we can't put yourselves in a compromising situation and expect God's blessing when we simply disobey his direction it's kind of like Lot being in Sodom and Gomorrah and the angels come and say Lot this city is going to burn you know and what we would do in Lot's shoes we say Lord you want me to get out of this city but I want you to save this city I want you to bless this city God I want you to bless my mess and God says abandon it because it's so broken sin is so twisted it can't be blessed what can be blessed is if you abandon it and you follow my way then I can bless it can somebody say amen God can protect you if you will be open to his direction the moment you reject his direction when it comes to your single life when God says to value purity he's not trying to take your fun he's trying to protect you protect your heart from being heartbroken protect your body your finances protect your future when God is asking you to put him first in your finances he has no need of money he has gold made streets God is protecting your finances by directing you when God is asking a husband to love his wife even when he doesn't feel like and a wife to honor her husband even if he doesn't act honoring God is protecting a marriage by directing a marriage when God is asking a kid obey your father and your mother and honor them God is not saying that so that he can squeeze fun out of you he's saying that so he can put brownie points into your college life into your finances and into your future he protects you by directing you you want God's protection it's not Geico it's not all state it's direction that's why when Paul met God his first question to, Paul, to God was what would you have me to do I'm headed to Damascus to kill Christians God says I'm giving you brand new directions the same location you're not gonna kill them you're gonna join them and Paul says yes sir and that's how he went many people today they want God's protection rejecting God's direction rejecting God's leading rejecting because God's direction is painful because God's direction might not make sense must understand every time God leads you every time God leads you he's always protecting you you might not get an extra blessing but you don't know how much mess you will avoid you may say but I got into complicated situation listen you don't know what complicated situation is when you follow God he protects you amen angels want you to see God before helping you to see water angels want you to see God before helping you to see water you know the first thing that the angel showed to Hagar was not water she showed him or they showed Hagar God she was running from her destiny and she meets an angel and then she says this she says I have seen him who sees me and then she says I'm gonna go back you know one of the reasons why people humble themselves it's not because necessarily they're so kind and humble it's because when you see someone who sees you you change you do if you have a license and you drive not looking at the speed limit with your phone right here and there's a police officer standing he saw you but nothing changed it's when you see him <laughs> everything changes right the phone drops immediately the phone call drops both of the hands on the wheel and you own speed one mile and you focus like you just drink six bottles of Red Bull and you're gonna drive like this for at least next half a day why 
because you just saw someone who sees you that's why when you struggle with some things angels want to get you the first thing they just want you to get a glimpse of God because see when you see a police officer the reason why your behavior changes because you know he can pull you over but when you see God you know he'll pull you through he will push you through he will cheer you up he will strengthen you he will raise you up he won't give you a ticket he will give you grace he will give you strength he will give you miracle and he will strengthen your weak hands can somebody say amen that's why the Bible says when Elijah was on a mountain and he saw surrounded by enemies and his servant was shaking scared and Elijah prayed one prayer he says God opened his eyes and when his eyes were open he saw that not only he was surrounded by problems and by enormous army he was surrounded by chariots and by the angelic army all surrounding the whole mountain and the Bible says that servant became strong and courageous when you are surrounded with problems, when you are surrounded maybe with your issues, God's angels will help you during prayer, during Bible reading, during worship, during church to get a glimpse of who God is, to see God. Because when you see God, your behavior begins to change. Some of you have been working on your behavior, but you got to work on your side. And God's angels are on a mission. They are on assignment to open your eyes, not to see your bank account, not to see your single status, not just to see who likes your statuses, who reposts your stuff, but to see the one who's been seeing you all the way long. To see God. And it's when you see Him, then you have the platform to start seeing water when you are in drought. You start seeing jobs when others only see unemployment. You start seeing a spouse when other people look at that lady and they just see a lady. You start seeing God's blessings in disguise when other people just walk over it and you see business deals. Why? Because Hagar that saw God, angels eventually helped her to see water what others only saw drought. Amen. God's angels are not only interested to help you see God. They want you to see opportunities. They want you to see miracles. They want you to see God's breakthrough. You know about six years ago when I just came across my wife at the time on Facebook and she added me on Facebook first. It wasn't my space, it was Facebook. And, and then what happened is that I, I eventually, I was single so that wasn't a sin. And I did click on her profile and I just, uh, she, she looked very attractive on the pictures. And I wanted to compare the profile picture with the rest of the pictures to see if she was that attractive. <laughs> and as I kept scrolling and scrolling, I saw that indeed she was very attractive. When I met her and we started um, to develop a courting relationship, we got engaged. And then she did this very interesting thing. She went through her pictures and she tagged myself in her pictures. Turns out two summer camps I was in her church and when all the people were coming for altar Lana was right there twice and I didn't see her. But I took an angel <laughs> to open these eyes of mine to see the water where there was only desert. Dr. young Cho, he's a pastor of the largest church, he was struggling with bladder for a very long time. It caused his life very, very difficult. One day he kept praying and praying and praying and praying to God for two hours and God heal my bladder, heal my bladder, heal my bladder. And as he went to sleep, in a dream he saw an angel coming in the room and on a plate he had a brand new bladder. So he looked at that and he, in the dream, he asked the angel, what are you planning to do with it? He says, what do you think I'm going to do with it? So the angel comes to him and he gets a little bit, uh, takes the new bladder and sticks it into his body. He says, I felt a little heat in the dream. He woke up and he never again had a bladder problem. The angel helps you see water. This is nothing new. 
you see some of us see in prophet shepherd shepherd's church where he would begin to pray and he says right now he says i see god's telling me that god's angels are fixing people's appliances Pe people's appliances and people start you know praying lord god you know my stove jesus my refrigerator and right on the spot people start coming up and they start sharing testimonies they say you won't believe it my daughter is at home and the stove started to work the car in the garage started to work and that is nothing new because we see that even in the bible when god's angels it's like that lady who was a school teacher decided to take her retirement took a truck loaded the truck drive around america and in i-5 close to sacramento her truck broke down her water pump went out and so she was right there in the middle of traffic she she couldn't move anything and and she got out she's just so frustrated so mad and she's just praying to God and said God please help me out nobody knows me I can't pull the truck to the side I don't know anybody people are screaming at me God send me an angel but please make sure he has mechanical abilities you won't believe it four minutes later pulls out this guy long beard a biker doesn't even talk to her opens the hood and begins to work on her water pump for five minutes and so she's just shocked he's very scary dude all tattoos everywhere so she just stands there he's like I hope she's not stealing anything she walks around and she looks on his jacket and it says hell's angels he took his hands out closed the hood it's a true story and he looked at her he says don't ever judge a book based on its cover got on his bike vanished she started her truck and he started to drive there was a time when apostle Peter was in jail God's angel came and Peter got out of jail when Elijah didn't have he was very hungry he was on the journey and God's angel came and he brought him food we see same thing everywhere in the Bible where God's angels were not limited to being your Geico insurance policy but they were involved in the affairs of life but God's angels are not involved in someone's life who throw gives their back toward God's instructions God's will and God's purposes I pray today in your life you will find water in the place of your desert for those of you who are in a place of unemployment and you're looking for a job that God will open the job you don't see right now for those of you who have money in the account and you're looking for an investment opportunity and you say I don't know where to put my money into that the Holy Spirit will send his angels who will open your eyes and you will see business opportunities for those of you in here today and you are in that time and that age too ready to get married and you're looking at everyone you're like you know what everybody looks so awesome and great but there is that one nothing sticks I pray that God will send his angels to open your eyes that you will see an angel for you in the area of marriage that God's angels will bring water of healing to your place of sickness to your place of disease and to your place of limitation in Jesus name but remember they want to open your eyes so you can see God and they want to open your eyes so you can see a miracle in a place of your problem amen and that that miracle will change the course of your life